Back in 1985, Tatler picked me as its known most eligible bachelor. I was living in Chelsea at the time and having to juggle a number of girls around, even on occasions having to return home during my lunch hour to fulfill my duty. I can't totally explain this sudden success with women, but I suppose becoming the Marquess of Worcester the year before, when my father became the Duke of Beaufort, had given me a higher profile. Tatler spoke of girls champing at the bit to date me, albeit with the caveat that I was one of the clumsiest men in Europe. At one party, some guacamole from a canapé was somehow diverted from its passage towards my mouth and ended up in a rather grand lady's Gucci handbag. She was both bewildered and displeased, in that order, when, in a desperate attempt to remove the green glob, I started throwing the bag's contents all over the room. To be honest, I was a late developer when it came to girls, cursed with a total inability to communicate with them. As a teenager, I found parties a nightmare of awkwardness as I dragged some unfortunate female onto the dance floor and then lumbered around doing something resembling a waltz while making extremely stilted conversation. The total absence of girls at Eaton had fostered a general culture of interest in other boys, though my participation in any form of actual homosexuality was relatively limited. After leaving school, I was roped into the debutante scene, then on its last legs, and met girls at formal parties. Eventually, something clicked and I ended up kissing multiple girls. Despite some exploratory fumbling, however, I was still a virgin. I'd often heard friends discussing a legendary prostitute in the West End of London called Denise Bunny, who seemed to specialize in these matters, and I even went as far as looking her up in the phone book. Fortunately, I never went down this route, as I later heard she was very much of a certain age. I could have been put off for life. It wasn't until a camping trip around Europe with a school friend that I finally got the monkey off my back. On a ferry to Greece, we saw two American girls getting on and bought some duty-free whiskey in the hope that this might encourage them to end up with one of us. Later that night, one of the girls asked if I'd like to come to her cabin, a request I couldn't refuse. We got on very well and I emerged triumphant, although the principal merit of my performance was speed of delivery. After that, my main staple for meeting girls was the season kicked off each year by Peter Townend, an incredibly snobbish man who'd just retired as editor of Burke's Peerage. He'd give a drinks party for debutantes in his Chelsea flat, a wonderful opportunity for eligible young men to inspect all the girls who'd recently arrived in London. I felt there was room for improvement in my technique, however, and couldn't help noticing that the most successful of my contemporaries was Robin Smith Ryland. I spent a considerable amount of time staring at the mirror and contorting my face into what I thought was his fail-safe seduction technique. 